Hey, it's Lauren. Today's video, I am so, so excited for. So if you saw the title, this video is about Violette FR. Um, she launched her first brand and she has been one of my personal favorite YouTubers, makeup artists to watch for, I don't know, probably the last six-ish years. Her videos sort of transport you into a different setting. I remember whenever I was working as a manager in a hair salon, um, at the end of really long days, I would come home and just like binge watch her videos. And it was just like such a nice escape from like the daily grind of like what was happening in life. Um, oftentimes you'll see her like in a little bistro, in a little cafe, meeting up with a friend, playing with makeup together, or like in the back of a cab. She is the quintessential busy woman on the go who still wants to look very chic, elevated, and have some sort of artistic feature on her face. And so with her launching her line, I was very, very excited. Um, it launched at 7 a.m., uh, Eastern time. So it was 4 a.m. here in California and I woke up because I was like, I am not going to miss anything selling out. So I bought the entire collection. We're going to talk about all of the products. The interesting thing is that she did not stick just with makeup. She actually included a little bit of skincare, hair, and a perfume. So it's a very like comprehensive picture of I think what she wanted to paint and I think that's really special because a lot of brands when they first launch don't do that. Um, so we're going to start with the Boom Boom Milk. This is her skincare product. This is $58. It's a three-in-one. It is meant to be a toner, a serum, and a moisturizer and as you can see it's got kind of this watery texture. By the way, this is not a first impressions video. I have been playing with all of these for the past few days. I will say regarding skincare, I do think it takes more time than just a few days to give a really thorough, solid opinion because you're going to need time to see results with skincare. But I can give you kind of my general, not first impression, but general impression of the product up front. So it comes with a sprayer. And honestly, you could go and spray it on your face because I'm still trying to avoid my perioral dermatitis, I'm actually going to spray this on my hands. And so you can see it's a very like thin kind of liquidy consistency. Um, it doesn't really have any, it's no added scent, but it, I mean, it just smells very light and kind of like nothingness. So what's really nice about this, it's very, very lightweight in the overall feeling and texture of it, but it actually does pack a punch of hydration and moisture to the skin. Um, I've actually been surprised by how much I have enjoyed this product um, and I think it'll be one that I will continue to enjoy. I'm personally someone who loves a more minimalist kind of routine and she actually, you'll see in her videos, she'll spray this on her hair. Um, it's actually, I think, pretty versatile. It has birch, um, I think it's like birch water, birch extract water, glacial water, olive leaf extract. It has some probiotics. So it's really just kind of good for everything and kind of nourishing the skin. And um, I really enjoy the texture of this. I think this is going to be one of those products that I really am going to love long term. And something really special that she did with her products, all of the caps have this like very beautiful kind of artistic stamp design on the top of them. And I think that's like such a special little finishing touch. But yeah, um, initial thoughts of this, I actually really enjoy this product and it cuts so many steps out of your routine. And I, like I've said before in skincare videos, I don't do a lot of skincare steps ever at once and so that even cuts it down further. I also think for like travel this would be amazing just to tuck in your bag and kind of be done. Um, with that I'm going to go ahead and pop on my sunscreen and then we'll come back in. So the next product that we're going to talk about is the Avec Amour perfume. It's an oil perfume. 
It's a half ounce and this retails for $52. I think what is so cute about this is that again, she has this little like kind of stamp on the top of it. And Violet explained that, you know, the idea behind this perfume and the, the design of it was that you could use this as like a stamp on a wax seal to send a love note to your lover and then add a little drop of the perfume oil on top of it. I think that's just so cute and um, it really fits with her and her branding and I think it's really just one of those little special touches that was so well thought out. So let's talk about the actual fragrance of this. The notes of this are predominantly musk, vetiver, she mentioned ylang ylang and bergamot. And I think there was something else in there. I will say this is a predominantly musk heavy scent. The interesting thing, the first time that I wore it, all I could smell was like a musk and like a whisper of something else, but like it didn't have a real strong leaning otherwise like from the musk. What's interesting is the next time that I wore it, I don't know if I had like shaken it a little bit or what, but that vetiver note really kind of jumped out more. So I would say with this perfume, it is definitely a skin scent. It is something that is going to wear close to you. It is something that is really meant for your own enjoyment. And I would say anyone who gets extremely close to you. It's not a big, loud perfume. It's not going to announce you when you walk through the door. That's my, I would say, normal preference for a perfume. <laughs> I like the, the perfume that's like, hey, I'm over here. This one's more like, hey, how are you? You know, like it's much more subtle and subdued than what I normally go for. But I have to say there's a very cozy aspect of this perfume and it's like it's subtle but it's kind of got this sensual undertone it reminds me a little bit of like a pile of clean laundry sitting on a wooden chair in a windowsill with a breeze blowing through that is like I feel like kind of my best <laughs> physical description but it, I mean it's a little more sexy than that too it's just, it's an interesting perfume. I like the vetiver note in there. It adds a little more intrigue. The unique thing too is that musk, I mean, perfumes in general do this where they'll wear very differently on everyone who wears them. But musk specifically, I think, plays with people's body chemistry really interestingly. Fragrances that I know that she's worn in the past are Infiori, Amber, something. And she actually had partnered with them and then she created a Jasmine perfume. So. It kind of fits with like the resinous family. I'm surprised it's maybe not a little bit bigger smelling and more floral forward. Um, but it does have that kind of like skin scent, musky, ambery undertone, which is like very much so her. And she's not into like sweet perfumes. She has said that many times. So I think this really fits. It's really on brand. Um, I really enjoy it. It's a little different than a lot of my normal go-to perfumes, but I think in that same vein, I enjoy it because of that. You know what I'm saying? So I like it. I think it's a great little perfume. I think it's great. You can tuck it in your bag. It's not enormous. Um, and one thing she had also said is that it does not contain alcohol. So like you don't have to worry about it drying out your skin or irritating it or if you're like out in the sun at the beach, like it's not going to give you issues with your skin. Um, and I know she said that was really important to her was not having alcohol in her products. So now let's talk about Frange Puff, which is her um, dry shampoo. And I, okay, I have a lot to say about this. This retails for $34.00. And it's refillable and the little packets are $20. So I actually really, really like this. I like the design of it. Down in the bottom here is where the product goes. Keep in mind, like bookmark this in your brain, okay? Product goes down in the bottom and then you have this little brush cap on the top. And this little brush is actually magnetic and it comes off so you can wash it, which for a reusable product where you're gonna be brushing it onto oily hair, I think that is genius. 
I think the design of this is fantastic. The other thing I really like is these bristles are kind of stiff. A lot of times with these types of products, they are too like flimsy and flexible. So I have to say, I actually really like this formula. It does not leave a chalky cast in my hair, which is like when you have darker hair and you're trying to find a dry shampoo, like that is an issue, right? I love the idea of this being one of those things you can kind of just like tuck into your bag for on the go. Um, and I think again, like that design is so brilliant. It has like a very subtle scent. It's like a mild powdery kind of scent, not like full on baby powder. It's kind of a fresh powdery scent. Um, and so as you can see, like it just disappears into the hair. It really does refresh and it adds a little bit of grip. The One of the like predominant ingredients is tapioca starch, which is really going to help to absorb some oil. There's also um, rice starch and I think it was oat flour and even some shea butter. So you get some of that conditioning um, as well. So I really like the overall formulation. Now, the one thing I do want to talk about with this, I just don't feel like there is enough product in here. I think it was like point oh oh seven ounces like it's a very very tiny amount and you can see it's like way way down here that it came in like the tiniest little sachet and like honestly yes it's refillable but like the refills are twenty dollars and it's like this little tiny paper sachet i just think that there needs to be more product like obviously a little goes a long way but I also wouldn't say that this is something I would like if I had like really, really oily hair. I'm not going to like go through all over my hair. I would just use an aerosol for that. This really is designed for on the go touch ups. And so I think it's fantastic for that. But I feel like the price point for this is off, you know? So I don't know. I, I really do enjoy it. Um, and I love the concept of being able to tuck it in my bag. But like I feel like I would need to buy two sachets to fill this back up. So I don't know. Like it? Wrong price point. Before I move into the makeup portion of this, I'm going to get my face kind of set and ready and then we will talk about the makeup that dropped in this collection. Okay, so we're going to play with Bombshine, which is her universal highlighting stick. It is roughly the size of a chapstick. And something that she had said was that she feels like most highlighters are way too large. And I actually agree with this. I have so many highlighters that are enormous and you use just like the tiniest dab. So it's like, why would I ever want something that is this big? It's going to take me three years just to get through it. And it's going to be bad by that point. <laughs> so I actually really appreciate what she did with this by creating a smaller highlighter. Because realistically, you're just going to do like a little swipe. So the way that she created this is she said there are reflective pigments rather than being like a really strong toned pigment. And the reason for this is that way it works beautifully on all skin tones and it's going to just catch that light and bounce it. And I actually think this is really beautiful. I've said this before, but I don't like highlighters that are like big chunky pieces of glitter. I want my skin to look like it's glowing from within. And I happen to think that this really achieves that. It just catches the light really beautifully. Um, this is balmier in consistency than say like my Phytosurgeons, which I just recently did a video on and I love so much. Um, but it also is not like overly sticky or dewy on the cheeks where it's going to catch your hair and you know make a mess of your makeup i just think that it adds the prettiest fresh glow to the face i actually really enjoy this product in particular look at that it's just it's radiant has this luminescence i love that it's not enormous um i love the consistency it's really easy to work with and she has showed this on a lot of different skin tones and it really does look beautiful on all of them. So I think this is fantastic. 
this retails for $25. And again, because you use such a small amount of highlighter, I still feel like this will last for quite a long time. Okay, so we are going to move into the You Paint, which is for your eye color. There are six shades total and they retail for $28. There are three matte and three twinkling. Um, I grabbed one of the matte and a twinkling. The shades that I got are To Do and Cleave de Lob. I probably butchered that. I'm trying. <laughs> so I have played with these quite a bit and I have a lot to say about them. Um, so I haven't watched anybody else's reviews. I wanted to come into my own with a clean slate and my own opinions. I have watched a lot of um, Violette talking about her brand and her products because I really wanted to become familiar with the DNA of this brand and really understand it before coming into my review. Um, and also just because I think that can really help with application and things like that. So there are a couple of ways that these can be used. The brush is designed in a way, it's like a kind of a flat doe foot. It's designed in a way that it can be used to quickly use the fat side and apply a bunch on and just very quickly blend it out for kind of a smoky effect. Or you can turn it on its side and it's a much thinner um, liner style. It's still like a thick eyeliner, but for quick impact, um, that's kind of how this brush was designed. So with it being a new tube, you can tell it grabs quite a bit of product on there. So I do like to wipe this off. Now, I've played around with these, like I said, quite a bit. And I think that there is definitely a learning curve. And something that you need to understand with these is that Violette modeled this formula after a liquid lipstick. She said that she used to use liquid lipsticks on her eyes. And so she told her lab when she was creating these, I want the texture and formula to be like a liquid lipstick. So I think you need to know that as like a key piece of this product to understand how to apply it better. And I want you to think about like a liquid lipstick. If you were to put a big swatch of liquid lipstick on your hand and try to start blending that really far from where you first placed it, you're going to run into issues with it kind of patching and separating a bit. Versus if you were to use like a little dot on your finger and then quickly buff that out, you're going to have a much softer wash. So I think because you can use this as a liquid liner, um, it has a very intense color payoff. And so if you're trying to put a big swatch of that on your eye and blend it really far, you're going to run into issues with it becoming patchy. And then when you try to apply more, it's just going to become a mess. So I have found with this formula in particular, I'm going to show you on my hand. It's important. So like if you use it as a liner, and make a very thin, small line. Not super thin, but you know what I'm saying. You can make that line. Now, if you go in here and you try to start blending all of this like up, you can run into some issues, okay? You don't wanna go like super far away. You wanna keep your blending really close to where you apply it and then work your way out. I think that's a really, really key point to give the most soft blend. Something Violette also mentioned was that this formula in particular, when you stop working with it, that's when it locks down. This formula is intensely long wearing, like waterproof almost. It's really pretty impressive. Um, but I think, you know, you do have to understand these elements about it or you're gonna be frustrated with it. <laughs> so, let me also show you. So you can do that kind of liner effect. I think it's really important when you're blending it to stay very close to where it is that you are blending it. So in mind, keeping in mind like a liquid lipstick, how you would apply that for like a blotted stained effect. If you're wanting a very soft wash of color with these, I like taking a very small, tiny dot of it and quickly buffing and smudging that out. And this I have found is really kind of the best way to get an all over, sorry, you can see that vein through my hand, a very quick all over color. 
and it's very, very easy. But I think if you were to go in <laughs> and if you were to use this wand and, you know, you go on your face wherever and you do like a giant, you know, swatch across your eyelid and then you want to blend all of that out because you think that you're going to get a really soft color. Well, these are very pigmented. So no, you're going to spend some time blending and then you might be like, well, this is not as soft as I want it on the edges. And I think it can kind of frustrate people. <laughs> but personally, I think when you when you play with it and you kind of figure out how it works, I actually think it's a very fast product to use. These dry, like I said, kind of like as soon as you're done blending it, these are really going to start to dry down and then you won't be able to move it around anymore. So I think it's very important to know that. Um, so yeah, the other thing too, so say you did like kind of a liner effect, you applied it really close to the lash line and then you wanted to add more. So we'll go down here where I kind of swatched this here. You can add a little tiny bit more where you want it and then start blending and kind of buffing that into the color that you had before to build up that intensity. Okay, so I'm showing you with to do um, on my hand. And then I also will show you a little bit of the Cleave de Lob. Sorry, I probably totally butchered that. It is such a beautiful, gorgeous copper. And I love this kind of color with my eye color in particular. They also have a, um, like a rose color that is so gorgeous. And I actually am kind of kicking myself for not getting that one. Um, so I'm going to show you just kind of a little swatching here. I do think that the twinkling formulas are a bit more forgiving to work with than the matte formulas. I think that's generally pretty true of um, a lot of products that you know you use. Shimmers kind of blur and conceal if a product is gathering in a specific spot where matte is not quite as forgiving. So I think that's something important to remember. But like this formula is insanely long wearing. And the nice thing too is it's very, very lightweight. So once you have it on, you really kind of forget that it's there. So let's play with it on my eyes. So for this look in particular, I am going to be playing with both shades because I want to show you how various application techniques work. Um, obviously the end color is not going to be the most like true color to the products themselves. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with To Do and I'm just gonna do a very soft wash initially. Voila. It's honestly, these are so, I think, easy to work with to get a very quick wash of color. So let's do that on the other eye also. So there is just like a very soft initial wash of color. You do, like I said, you have to work kind of fast. But I think it's really pretty. I think it's really, really easy to work with in that sense. If you understand, like you want a very soft all over wash of color, don't go in and swipe really heavy with the actual wand. Dab some on your finger and smudge it out that way and you'll get a really beautiful soft wash of color. If you were to put a, you know, a big swath of color on there and then try to blend that out, you'd be blending forever and you would end up with it way further out than you intended for it to be. The next thing I'm going to do is use this particular shade more like a liner and very softly diffuse it out that way so you can kind of see what that looks like too. So you can see it built up that intensity on the lash line as well and just very, very softly smudged it out with my finger. But I think that's really pretty. And with that, um, because I always like a little bit of extra definition on my lower lashes, I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom as well. So fast, so easy. Okay, 
So now I want to play with that beautiful copper shade and kind of show you what that looks like. Um, essentially what I'm going to do is cover this a little bit more heavily, um, which is really pretty. I've done this before, so it'll give it more kind of dimension and, and depth because there is that slightly darker tone. But we're going to go in a little bit harder with this color because I want you to see you can create a more graphic shape that is still somewhat softly blended out. So let's play with this one as well. Again, I'm going to wipe off some of that excess because this is still pretty new. So there is a lot of product there. So basically what you do is you just create your kind of shape. I'm going to take this up a little bit and the best thing about this is when you're doing something like this you actually don't have to blend out that center part you're going to have more pigment payoff if you don't so i think it's important to remember to blend softly pretty close to where you've applied it and not try to go too far away from it. Anything that you need to clean up, you want to do it very quickly after the fact because it will set. I like that. I'm going to add a bit more. And you can kind of just build it up where you need more color and just like don't blend it. <laughs> And I actually want to take that up a little bit higher, so. Because of my eye shape, my, um, my eyes are somewhat deep set. And so if I leave things at my crease, you don't see a lot of my eyeshadow. So, so fast to create a really bold eye. There you have it. So I think the really like the key things to remember with these are if you want a really soft diffusion of color, dab a tiny bit on your finger and buff it out that way rather than applying it directly to the lid. If you're wanting to use it as a liner, I think it's really important to get off the excess and then, you know, work quickly if you're doing any type of smudging work. And for a more graphic eye, for more of like a one and done type look, I think it's important to apply the product heavily and then blend as closely to where it is as you possibly can rather than trying to extending like that blend really, really far away from where you applied it. They do dry really quick. They are incredibly long lasting. Um, I think that these are really, really awesome, but I think that you also have to know a little bit about how to use them before you go into it because I think if a lot of people buy these and then they try to apply it um, like a different type of liquid or cream shadow I think they'll be frustrated because they'll have patchy issues personally though I think they're a fantastic product and I want to get a couple of the other twinkling shades so now that I've got this on I want to put on a little bit of mascara and then we will dive into petal bush matte which is like the liquid rose lip the very last product we're going to talk about is petal bush which is a matte rose red liquid lip and this retails for 25 there's only one shade so far it has a similar kind of doe foot component this one's maybe a little bit thicker and it has a slight arc so it will actually hug the lip they're really it really isn't like a scent it just smells like a product it doesn't have like a strong fragrance one way or another so with this being a matte lip this is a type of product that I often struggle with because I don't like my lips feeling dry so I find to start with this type of product for me personally it's really important to have very well hydrated lips before I start um, so I'm going to apply my MAC prep and prime 
For me, this just really improves the overall comfort of wearing a matte lip. So with Petal Bouche, you have a couple of ways that you can wear it. You can wear it more like a stain. You can wear it really, really full on, actually painted and kind of blur out the edges. And you can wear it really, really crisp. The unique thing about this formula in particular is that as you build it up, it will continue to deepen. Um, but it still is a red and it doesn't lose that vibrancy of being a red. So before I apply it on my, actually, you know what, we'll just apply it to the lips. So I'm going to show you like the blotted kind of stained effect first. Okay, so you can see it's a very, very quick, easy application to do it that way. You still get a really bright punch of color. Um, you do want to like let it dry down a little bit um, before you really like move or eat or talk or whatever. But I think this is a really beautiful way to wear it. It's a very easy way to wear a red. Something um, good to know about this kind of red, I would say it's a little more blue leaning than it is warm leaning, um, but Violette made sure to have both blue and yellow. And because of that, it's actually, I think, very flattering on most skin tones. Um, so let me do an actual layer of it on my lips. And I think something I do want to kind of say is very similar to the U Paint, you want to kind of wipe off some of that excess where it's going to be a lot of product. And the other thing I found with this, because it is so fast drying, um, one of the things that I like to do is start in the center of my lips and then work my way out. That way there's not a lot of product concentrated on the edges. I find it much easier to kind of control and be able to blend that way. Okay, so there is a more heavy application. There is um, kind of that subtle blurring that I did from the kind of blot stained application, but I want you to be able to see what this looks like. And I'm actually going to let this dry a little bit and do an extra coat more in like an ombre style so you can see some depth around the corners and edges. So just for demonstration's purpose, we're going to apply that last coat. And I am going to start from the outer edges and work my way inward. All right, so there is a third layer of petal bouche. Um, I personally like sticking around the second coat, if you will. Um, it's a little hard to see, but I feel like when you start layering it up a little too much, it can start grabbing and getting a little patchy. And so if you saw like I was using my finger to sort of buff that out, it still looks good, but I do think the more layering you do with it, the more you're going to have to kind of work with it and make sure it's not grabbing too much in specific areas. It looks really beautiful though. With liquid lips, the one thing that happens, and it does happen with this formula too, is where my lips touch, I always feel like there ends up being like a really harsh line between the color of my lips and the lip color itself. And I don't necessarily love that. It's not as bad with this formula, I don't think, um, but it still happens and it kind of bugs me. So this formula also, I would not say that it's completely like waterproof, transfer proof and all of that kind of stuff. But I do find it does not transfer very easily. Um, reason being, I gave my baby a big old smooch on the cheek just to see how much of this is going to kiss off, <laughs> essentially. And there really wasn't anything on her face, which was kind of great. Um, let me see. This is, I think, dry enough now. Yeah, you can barely see like any kind of outline, which is really nice. Um, so overall, kind of my like thoughts on this line, I'm really, really happy with the initial launch. I do think that for the actual makeup products, there are some learning curves. Um, and I think that, you know, you do have to kind of play around with it a little bit to get it to your liking. But I think if you go in with it with the understanding that 
all of it is meant to be fast for the gal on the go. Kind of understanding what the like the U paints were modeled after being a liquid lipstick. I think that really helps to understand how you should apply them. Um, and the fact that they like, once you get them on, <laughs> they're not going anywhere. I think that's a really, really awesome feature for a product, especially if you want to apply your makeup in the morning and not have to mess with it at all for the rest of the day. Um, I think this lip color is incredibly beautiful. The color story, I feel like overall is just, it's very cohesive and it's very violet. If you've watched her over the last few years, kind of knowing the colors that she really loves. It's really fun to see that she's put that into her own line. I love that, you know, like the Boom Boom Milk is meant to be kind of an all-in-one product where you don't need a ton of bottles. And I actually really like the packaging. I think it's really chic and something that I would enjoy seeing on my countertop. Um, I think, you know, I love these little details like the stamps and the gold. I think it's beautiful. This perfume is like I said, it's kind of different than a lot of stuff that I have. It's not super floral and like uber feminine. It's more of like a unisex scent. Um, but it also, I like the way that it wears. It's very cozy feeling to me. And I like that, you know, I like it that it's in a rollerball. One of the things that Violette said was that she likes the sensual aspect of having a perfume that you are using to touch on your skin. I think that's just like it's so on brand for her and I think that this is really really beautiful um so yeah overall I'm really excited to see where this line will go I know that Violette has mentioned she will be releasing a matte lip balm color um I think she said like either June or July there are some blushes on the way which is really really exciting and there are also going to be more shades of the U paint launching I believe she said October. So there is more coming from Violette. She has also said that she will not release things like foundation because she feels like there are enough really good ones on the market. And her aim for her brand is filling a hole where she had products that she wanted that just didn't exist yet. And I really respect that. I think that's a really, really great way to be. There's enough products on the market. Everything is oversaturated as it is. So I think it's great that she's putting out things that she really wants. So I hope that this has been an incredibly informative and comprehensive review. If you've been on the fence about these products or if you already bought them and you're struggling with the applications, I hope that this is really helpful. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps other people to find my channel and I can continue making you these types of videos. None of this was gifted. None of this was sponsored. This is all my own opinions of the product. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.